Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist trying to save the ocean and its inhabitants. Today is Monday, June the 13th, which unfortunately means it's been over a month since I last posted an update here on YouTube. In fact, looking back, I think this is probably one of the longest hiatuses I've taken away from my channel since starting Dauphin. Over this past month, I really can't even claim to have made a bunch of tangible progress on Dauphin, which is not great, and as you guys know, probably pretty uncharacteristic of me since I tend to put a lot of emphasis on productivity and mental health. So kind of in reflection of the past few weeks, I figured we should kick off this devlog by talking about it and see what went wrong. The good news is I have a pretty good idea of what's been going on here and why I haven't been able to really sit down and be as productive as I usually try to be over the course of a given week or month. I'm pretty sure at some point over the past few videos that I have posted, I've mentioned kind of two big life changes that I've gone through recently. The first is of course the introduction of Moose to our family, our little four-legged demonic presence that now runs our household. And I've also kind of changed roles at my job. I've been kind of a software developer engineer for the past eight years since I joined the industry. And I've recently moved from that role into a tech lead role where I manage a team of developers. And that's frankly been just a really big and challenging change for me. Now these are both great changes. We love Moose to death. He's just an amazing puppy and I can't wait to see the dog he turns into. And at work, you know, this new change in roles is definitely having a positive impact on my career trajectory, which is a good thing for a number of reasons. That said, you can kind of see how both of these things play into what I would maybe call an increased mental workload, both at work and then when I'm home before and after work dealing with the dog. After reflecting on all this for a bit, I realized that what I'm not lacking in is my motivation to actually continue working on Dauphin. I'm still incredibly passionate about this project. I can't wait to complete it. And I think about it all throughout my day and talk about it with my wife all the time. What I'm struggling with is the mental capacity to actually sit down and get to work on it. That's especially true with the overhead of filming and producing video content. So what's the solution here? I think it's probably gonna be a two-parter with the first part being trying to reduce the overhead of filming the updates that you see in these videos. And by that, I don't mean reducing the frequency, but making it easier on me to record these updates. So probably less preparation, less scripting, and overall less of the perfectionism that I typically expect of myself as I'm recording these updates. Thinking more about that, that could even be a good thing. Even if the clips are a little rougher around the edges, they might be more authentic if I'm just kind of recording off the cuff as I go about my day. The second and more difficult part of this solution will be building up my discipline. And this is something that I'm always trying to do regardless of new puppy or new role at work, but I'm gonna have to be a bit more intentional about it now. I've always liked to think of discipline as kind of a muscle. It's not something you can will into existence. You have to train it, kind of put it through a stress and rest response in order to help it grow. It's exactly what I'm gonna to need to do here as I kind of adapt to the new weights in my life of the puppy and the new job. I need to kind of train my discipline to be able to bear that new weight. And I think that's gonna happen just through being really intentional about sitting down, getting to work and making that a part of my normal routine. So in other words, I kind of just need to do it, but I wanna add a little bit more structure to that by saying, just do it, but be consistent about it for the next 21 days or so, so that I can hopefully build a new habit of being able to fit development and video production into these new kind of other variables in my life. I think that's what it's gonna to take to get back on the wagon here. So that's about enough of all that, I reckon. We'll see how the next few weeks go, and if this approach doesn't work, we will adapt and find something that does. In the meantime, probably time to start talking about what's next for Dauphin. So looking back where I left off on my dev board here, if we look at my active tasks, you'll probably notice something that I haven't really talked about in a previous devlog, and that is a stamina system in Dauphin. And this is probably something that is gonna have mixed opinions around it, but this is something I've wanted to build out for a long time because I think there are a couple of good uses for stamina in the current gameplay. The first of these is making combat and exploration a bit more engaging. All I'm really imagining here is a stamina mechanic that allows the player to sprint when they are above water and kind of dash when they're underwater. This will help the player engage enemies more quickly, dodge attacks more effectively, and just be able to kind of traverse the world more quickly when they're not even in combat at all. The other important use case I see here is for the climbing skill. If you remember when I was designing the skill page for the player, I talked about having a climbing skill that would allow the player to more effectively traverse kind of more vertical islands. And I don't entirely know how this will work yet, but I'm kind of imagining a Breath of the Wild style setup where having more stamina will allow you to climb higher and explore new places. 
On top of all that, I think this will just be a fun thing to implement. I wanna start out with a very basic kind of resource UI to show the player how much stamina they have. The actual stamina system, how we track that value and maybe how equipment modifies it, and then ultimately how that stamina is used through a sprint mechanic for above water and a dash mechanic for underwater. Should have some time to work on that UI today, so I will get started now and we'll catch up soon. All right, we are back on the beach now and you'll notice in the top left corner of the player's HUD, we now have some new UI elements. The smaller green bar on the bottom here is the stamina bar and we'll get to that in a minute. The top bar is actually a kind of new piece of UI that I didn't talk about, which is gonna to correspond to the player's corruption level. I spent some time thinking about what all I wanted to show up here and kind of what I wanted it to look like and I just landed on something very simple, at least for now, kind of this two stacked horizontal bar system much like something you'd see in maybe Monster Hunter or a Souls game. Most of my time so far has been spent hooking up the corruption bar because the corruption system already exists for the player. In its current state, when the player is attacked by a corrupted organism like our sand crab here, he would simply start to turn more purple and have more corruption particles floating off of him the more damage he took. This was a cool effect, but didn't really tell the player how close they were getting to that max corruption state, at which point there's kind of a game over scenario. So I wanted to have a more concrete piece of UI to show that information to the player. So how this works now is if we take damage, we'll kind of see a few things happen. The bar will start to fill up white to let you know just how much damage you took from a particular hit. And then after a short delay, we'll animate the fill of the bar to correspond to the player's total corruption level after that damage. If you're curious, this is the entire script for that player corruption bar. This is actually a very dumb UI component that just entirely kind of responds to the existing corruption system. So there's not a lot of business logic taking place here. You can see our most important export is just the node path to the player's existing corruption node. We get that node and then we are connected to a signal from that node for when the corruption value changes. At that point, we just update Kind of those two different fills for the bar the initial white fill that happens instantly and the following purple fill that happens after a delay and using a tween for animation what comes next is our stamina bar and just like the corruption bar this is going to be a very kind of dumb ui component that responds to an existing stamina system the problem is that the stamina system does not exist yet so there's no logic to put into our stamina bar so my next step is going to be to actually create a stamina system for the player to consume to create those dash effects when you're below water and sprint effects when you're above water. That seems like a bit too big of a task to start before work here this morning, so I think I'm going to call it here now, make a little bit of progress on that off camera, and join you again once I have something to show and something to which I can start hooking up my stamina bar. Good morning folks, we have made it to Friday morning and I want to give y'all an update on the progress of my stamina system. The short version is that I have a very basic iteration of this system now working. You can see the stamina bar is filled up green in the top left corner here, and if I start to run around and hold shift, you'll see that the movement speed of the player increases pretty drastically right now, and the stamina bar starts to drain. Once we let go of the shift button, the character will slow down again and the bar will start to refill. I want to show you how I ended up putting all this together and that starts with my very simple resource called the base player stats. As you might imagine, these are some basic stats that kind of inform the player's exploration. So we have a maximum value for the corruption that the player can tolerate, things like base values for run, walk, and swim speed, air supply from the players underwater, and of course our newest addition, the maximum stamina. To accompany those base player stats, I also have a resource called the player stat modifier. Basically for each of those base stats, we can have one or more modifiers that change that value. So for example here, the max corruption, we can increase either that percentage or the base value itself. And similarly for max stamina, we can increase the base value down here. These modifiers come from gear that the player can equip and end up ultimately influencing the final calculated value of a given stat. 
This all comes together in my player stat manager class, which I've probably shown y'all before. We have a copy of our modifiers here as well as a copy of our stats. And really all we do in this class is loop through all of the player's equipped gear and kind of bundle up all of those modifiers. Once we have the final value for all of the equipped stat modifiers, we come down here and calculate the stats themselves using you know multiplication for percentage modifiers and addition for base modifiers. The output is a copy of the current player stats that has all these modifiers applied, and that's where we actually get the value for things like our stamina. Now for the good part, our player stamina controller. Much like we have with the corruption node for the player, I kind of needed a dedicated place to manage the stamina for the stamina bar to actually go and look for that resource value. So that's what we're looking at here with the stamina controller. The most important part of this class is the function called request stamina. This is where an individual state like the move state will request stamina based on input of the, in this case, the shift key for dash. This will kind of hand things over to the stamina controller where we will decide if we have enough stamina to actually allow the player to dash. And if we do, we will change the value of our active dash multiplier here in the stamina controller. And that's what the move state will look to to determine if we want to multiply the player's run speed. This all ends up coming together in our player move and swim states, and we'll just start out by looking at our move state here. As mentioned before, we trigger this with an input, and we're capturing input here in the move state, so I've added a new line to basically request stamina from that stamina controller based on whether or not the dash input is pressed. As mentioned before, within the stamina controller, that will change the active dash multiplier. Down here in physics process, where we're actually applying a velocity to move the player, we start by grabbing the base player stats run speed and multiplying that by that active dash multiplier in the stamina controller. This informs kind of our base velocity value here locally in the move state, at which point we use it for movement. I think this ended up being a perfectly good start to the stamina system. It works as expected and certainly allows the player to traverse the world more quickly and efficiently, which is definitely what I wanted to create here. Looking at my task board, I think there are a few tweaks I could make to kind of make the whole system feel a bit more polished. The first of those is to add a timed delay before stamina recharge, meaning that the player just kind of has to rest for a second before that stamina will start to come back. Similarly, if stamina is completely depleted, I'd like to wait for the bar to completely recharge, kind of as a penalty for using all of that stamina. Also, I'd like to have some kind of, you know, flashy animation to let the player know if they've completely emptied their stamina. And then something just kind of like a particle burst when a sprint or dash is initiated. I'll certainly have an audio cue for this as well at some point, but a visual cue would be nice as well. Pretty good progress this week. I've got about an hour before work this morning, and I know it's going to be a big day at work with an upcoming demo, so I think I'm just going to chill out before work starts, pick this up tomorrow, and hopefully have the devlog ready to go by Sunday. Alright y'all, welcome back to early Saturday afternoon. Had a productive morning this morning. I woke up and worked on the stamina system, took the morning puppy shift, mowed the lawn, and then sat back down for a few minutes to make a few more tweaks in the code, and now we're here. I did reasonably well here on my to-do list, wrapped up my logic changes around stamina recharge and the penalty if you completely empty your stamina bar, and then I just got started on my UI changes. I'm not entirely sure how I want this last one to work yet, so I'll probably end up knocking that one off off camera. So most of my efforts from this morning actually can only be seen when the player runs completely out of stamina. So we'll just hold down the shift key, increase our speed, zoom back and forth a little bit, and you'll notice now that the bar is empty, it's turned red and has started to refill. During this time, even if I press shift, my player will not speed up and no more stamina will be consumed. This is the kind of penalty you incur from using up your entire bar. Once the bar is completely recharged, it will return to its normal color, and at that point we can once again use our stamina. Another small change here is the addition of a delay to the recharge of your stamina. So if I use just a little bit here and let go of the shift key now, you'll see that that stamina kind of pauses there for a second before beginning to recharge. I don't really know if I'll keep this, but I've seen this in a lot of other games. I think it makes you think just a little bit more about how you spam your stamina usage. So for now, I think it's a good change. Overall, I'm really happy with the progress made this week. Apart from just trying to get back on the wagon and get back into the swing of development, 
managed to create a stamina system that's pretty lightweight but flexible enough to kind of be adapted to usage within multiple states and be affected by equipment that the player wears. I think this is a good start to a system that will ultimately need more tweaks but should be very adaptable to the climbing skill once I eventually get around to building that. As always, I want to give a huge thank you to the folks who support Dolphin's development and this channel on Patreon. New patrons since my last video are John Perry, Snarling Sheep, Nifty Pixel, and Augustine Mieres. If I missed someone over the past month, I'm super sorry, please let me know and I will make it right. For those new patrons, I am adding four Amano Shrimp to my 10 gallon to help with a recent algae spike. I'm super excited to see how big these guys get. Garami supporters this month are Cody Odin, Finnick Fu Games, Mega Ombre, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, Binary Chef Elena, and Kyle Van Riper. Beta supporters are Vlad Sunny, Deliuse, Happy Hippie, and Nifty Pixel. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully it will not be very long before you guys see me again in another video, and until then, stay safe.